stage right now. Make her feel welcome as I bring her to the stage. Give it up for Miss Courtney K. Things, 
you know, relationships don't have to be hard. Actually, they shouldn't be because men and women aren't really all that different, and I can prove that. Think about this. So women are really into chick flicks, you know? Men are really into porn. Like, at least we all agree a great movie requires a box of Kleenex. <laughs> That's my favorite joke, too, yeah. <laughs> Have a little date night. I love having a boyfriend, too. I couldn't be happier about it. Because we have these super sweet nicknames for each other. I don't know if you guys at home in relationships do this, but get nicknames for each other. It's amazing. So sweet. You know, like, like he calls me Turkey. Because after the hoo-ha, he just wants to go to sleep. <laughs> Little chipper fan humor. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, and um, I call him Home Depot because it's easier for me to do it myself. <laughs> he loves that joke. <laughs> I like to have nicknames for all the people I care about in my life, though, you know, because I'm a realist with a positive attitude. Like, uh, like my sister, she's a real trashy broad, so I nicknamed her Curbside. She's got two illegitimate children. One of them's fat and the other one's gay, so I call them Hefty and Flat. <laughs> my mom's got Parkinson's disease, so we call her Michael J. Fox. <laughs> oh, come on, Sugarfoot. Even if that hurt her feelings, she'd just shake it right off. <laughs> mom loves that joke. She's happy I'm even here right now. I could have died of shaking baby syndrome in the womb. <laughs> okay. They're like, you lost us at the terminal illness. Okay, fine. But here's the thing, here's the thing. So, when I was a little girl, Michael J. Fox and Curbside and I, we all lived in an all-black neighborhood. Don't get mad yet. So, I didn't realize that there were, like, we lived in an all-black neighborhood. To the point that we were just like three marshmallows floating around in a cup of hot cocoa. Seriously, you guys, every time we opened the front door, it looked like a chess match had gone terribly wrong. I didn't even know that there were other white people in the world. You know, I just thought it was some sort of PC mistake. But, um, I did get perspective growing up that way. You know, like, I noticed early on that poor black people sit on their porches a lot. Poor white people don't do that because trailers don't come with porches. Ah! <laughs> said, yeah. Curbside lives in a porchless community. I like to call that shit the dumpster. It's ridiculous. Pretty happy to be here today. I had a, you know, I kind of have a, like a whole new life for myself the last couple years, and I'm excited to share it with you. You know, a couple years ago, I got some new equipment. I didn't used to be a dude or anything. <laughs> See what happened was. Three years ago, I tried to go off a rope swing. Uh, and let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about as strong as a wet square of toilet paper. In the winter time, I get pain underneath my covers at night. Like, I have no business trying to support all 47 pounds of me swinging from a rope. But I tried it, and I fell, landed on a rock, sending my snatch back to the Stone Age. <laughs> so getting your rocks off to a whole new level. Seriously, you guys, I really slammed the clam. Well, it wasn't all bad, you know. It was unfortunate for the family, but lucky for me, there was this young Chinese woman in the hospital waiting to donate her lady parts. So now, I have a Chinese fortune cookie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cute, isn't it? They installed it sideways, so it's a little extra slanty. It feels like that. And now I'm better at math, so that's nice. <laughs> It wasn't long after that. I totally changed my life. I started doing stand-up comedy after that. But I had so many jobs before this. They were all awful. I was always destined to do this, I think. You know, like this one, for a long time, I was a bartender, actually. And I had this dude, he came into my bar, and he drank with me all day. And at the end of the day, I gave him his check, and he's like, honey, I don't have any money to pay for this. And unfortunately, I can't leave you a tip. To make it up to you, I'm going to take you out to the alley after your shift, and I'm going to get you high. Sounded like a terrible idea, so I went. <laughs> we got down there, and the dude didn't have any weed. 
Yeah, so I raped him. Always tip the staff, ladies and gentlemen. Educational comedy from me to you. You're welcome. And for the record, I tipped him. Just saying. 20%. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's actually my love for horticulture that led me to stand up comedy. Now, originally, I wanted to be in the army. I wanted to serve our country in the military, and it didn't work out. I sat down with my recruiter, and he said, Courtney, we have to talk about your drug use. And I said, shit. <laughs> he goes, how many times in your life would you say you smoked marijuana? And I said, well, hmm, what is six times 365? <laughs> Fortune cookie says, 2,190. Thank you, P. She comes in handy. Yeah, that's a double entendre, sort of. I don't know. I thought about being a stripper before I started doing stand up for a real skate. I figure I already have the daddy issues. Why not throw in some go go boots and a coke at it? But um, I never actually been to a strip club before. You know, so I roll into this joint and there's nobody there except for one dude with a colostomy bag. Oh. Immediately, I am questioning my future as a stripper, but I stay, I stare, I watch. You know, and he's throwing dollars at some of the girls. And then, Felicia popped up onto the stage, and Felicia was about the size of a hippopotamus. And to keep it sexy, she had this mesh top that kind of made her look like bubble wrap. <laughs> now she spun around trying to rip the pole out of the ceiling a couple times. Old man Bag, said it was more entertaining to pick up his pillow pouch and stare at the wall than to watch Felicia this road popping out our little pudge pillows. Like, that is harsh, you know? Like, talk about rejection. It was at that moment that I realized, like, whatever it is that it takes to be a stripper, I don't have it. I don't know. Nope. Or tits. <laughs> so, stand up comedy. But I, you know, it does require a lot of travel. And I'm a half pint, you know. I do occasionally worry about things like rape. Especially after that last guy called the cops. <laughs> I gave him 20 bucks and he still pressed charges? What a pansy. It was ridiculous. I don't know. I should have known going into my, like, as a child, I should have known that stand up was what I was going to do. You know, when I was a little girl, my childhood heroes were MacGyver and Mr. Rogers. You know, because together they taught me to build a bong out of a sweater <laughs> and smoke it. <laughs> you gotta be resourceful, people. You know, I was really into Fraggle Rock, too. Does anybody here remember Fraggle Rock? Oh my gosh. I loved that show. I loved it. Past tense. Loved it. So, here's the dealio. When I was 10 years old, my brother saved his internet pornography on our family computer under Fraggle Rock. <laughs> right? So I'm 10, I double click expecting like sing song Happy Muppets. Instead, I got the future of my hoo ha getting stabbed by some man's really gold sword. Oh, it was traumatizing. Was it that time in your life when you're five years old and you wake up in the middle of the night with a nightmare and you run into your parents' room and you're like, Mommy, Daddy, I had a nightmare and they're working? that says, what would Jesus do? So I threw my head out of the window and I let him know, he knew his goddamn dirty dog! <laughs> but I 
feel so much better now. Thank you so much for watching at home and being here. I'm Courtney K. Myers at CKM Comedy. Before you get going. So please tell our online members a little bit about yourself, how long you've been doing comedy, that type of thing. That type of thing. Okay. Yeah, I started doing stand up comedy in Nashville, Tennessee in October of 2008. And then in July of 2009, I moved back to my hometown of Indianapolis to pursue stand up comedy as a career because it doesn't pay shit. Um, and now um, I have my website, ckmcomedy.com, and I run several comedy rooms around town. Um, you can find a couple of them and a couple extras run by other comics at indiestandup.com. So I'm just going for it while I'm young and dumb enough to get away with it. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen.